Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our first hymn is an Easter one. This joyful Easter tide, what need is there for grieving? We come to our time of prayer. During our prayers I shall read the white writing and if you'd like to respond at home with the yellow writing. Lord of life, we thank you for our living and breathing, loving and smiling, friendship and learning, and the life of each day. Lord of life, we thank you. Lord of life, we thank you for the sprouting, peeping, buzzing and tweeting natural wonders and the life of your earth. Lord of life, we thank you. Lord of life, we thank you for the caring, sharing, growing and praying place of love and nurture in the life of your church. 
Lord of life, we thank you. For your love, your grace, and the life you freely offer to us. Lord of life, we thank you. Amen. God of truth and grace, we find your truth hard to face, especially when your light shines into our lives, showing up our false values, our self-deception and the lies we sometimes live. When we fall from grace, forgive us. God of faith and hope, we confess we have not kept faith. So often we have given in to cynicism and despair. We are so busy that we have no time to reflect on what we believe or to sit at your feet and learn. When we meet as a church, sometimes our full agenda has no space for the hope of the world. When we fall from grace, forgive us. God of love and new beginnings, we hurt each other and you bring healing. We break our promises and you still believe in us. We deny you and you are still there. When we fall from grace, forgive us. Our words are your crown of thorns. Our actions nail you to the cross. And you say, Father, forgive, for they do not know what they are doing. When we fall from grace, forgive us. We bury you and you roll away the stone. We meet you and we are still uncertain. We recognise you and the next thing we know, you are blessing and sending us far and wide to share the good news of your truth and love. So, forgiven, may we go out from here to serve with love and share your grace. Amen. We're going to share the Lord's Prayer together and this week we're going to use the sung version. So thanks to Brian for the recording of this on the organ. It does start straight away, there's no introduction. Please sing at home as you remain on mute. This passage comes after Elijah has had the competition with the prophets of Baal uh, and Jezebel has threatened his life. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. 
I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Amen. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord replied, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. Our next hymn is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. <laughs>
a Pharisee asked Jesus a question to test him. The Pharisee asked, Teacher, which command in the law is most important? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. This is the first most and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. All the laws and the writers of the prophet depend on these two commands. Thank you, Phyllis and Jessica, for sharing our readings for us today. This week, we pick back up our series of preaching themes drawn from the Methodist Way of Life materials. And today we have the theme, We Will Care for Ourselves and those around us. So I want to start today by asking you a question. A simple question, one you've heard before, one you've probably asked before. It's just this. How are you? This question crops up all the time in everyday life. But I wonder, how often do we really give space for the answer? How often do we listen to someone talking about their own well-being? How often do we articulate our own experience to someone who cares enough to listen? I wonder how often we even ask ourselves this question or take a moment to reflect on what the answer might be. So right now, let's just take that moment. Have a think for yourself. How are you feeling? How are things with you at the moment? In that passage that Jessica just read to us, Jesus answers the Pharisee, who asks, what are the most important commandments? He gives two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul, and love your neighbour as yourself. I think, though, perhaps hidden in these two instructions, there's somewhere lurking in the background a third if we're called to love our neighbour as ourselves, Jesus must mean that we need to start by loving ourselves. This seems almost taken as read, but actually I wonder if it's quite so straightforward. Not all of us feel positively about ourselves, at least not all of the time. Most of us can probably identify some aspects of our lives or personalities which we find it quite hard to love. Sometimes, indeed, we think we can be much harsher in criticising ourselves than we ever would be towards a friend or neighbour. What do you think it means to love yourself? And how does this relate to loving those around us? I think sometimes we can be quite slow to focus attention on this notion of loving ourselves. And the reason is probably because it seems a bit contradictory to some of Jesus' other commandments. The Bible tells us to prefer the needs of others, to put others first, and to be prepared to put ourselves last. We hear a message about living selflessly, living for others and not for ourselves. This message is echoed loud and clear through the church, quite rightly, this is what Jesus taught us. And also, I think, through other social structures. Even at an early age, we're often told to treat others as we would like to be treated. And the good manners to say after you to other people. I remember back to my brownie guide days. A brownie thinks of others before herself. With all of these ideas ringing in our ears, shaping our idea of what it looks like to be a good person, to be a follower of Jesus, I think... It's often hard to make choices which centre on our own well-being. It feels selfish somehow if we've got to make a choice about how to use our time, our money or our energy to look at our own needs rather than the needs of others. But I think we should carefully examine this perception. Is caring for oneself the same thing as being selfish? Does loving ourselves mean that we love others less. 
we heard this morning the story of Mary and Martha and this is a story that I particularly like and one you might have heard me speaking about before. I think perhaps I might not be alone in having a bit of a soft spot for Martha. It seems to me that she's a very relatable character, perhaps particularly to our busy modern lifestyle. Martha's practicality, her efficiency, her care, her welcoming of others are traits that I admire, perhaps even aspire towards. And I also feel it's all too understandable when she becomes frustrated with her sister, who's chosen to sit and chat with the dinner guests rather than helping with the catering. It seems to me that Martha has been remarkably selfless in the care and energy she's lavished on her guests during this story. She's opened up her home, she's prepared the meal. One can only imagine the hours or even days of preparation, cleaning, cooking, attention to every detail. However, here in this little scene, we see that her hard work has led, has led to a build-up of frustration. It results in this little moment of resentfulness, snappiness towards her sister. Again, I find this so relatable. Paradoxically, I think it's sometimes when we are so focused on the needs of others to the extent of neglecting our own needs that we create the conditions which could lead us accidentally into selfish behaviours. Perhaps when we're emotionally drained and run off our feet, that's the moment when we snap at our family members or make an insensitive remark to a colleague. When we're rushed and hungry, Perhaps that's the time when we thoughtfully, when we thoughtlessly grab at processed convenience food we'd never normally buy and then throw away the plastic packaging which can't be recycled. I'm reminded of what Paul says about in his letter to Romans about the desire to do what's good that we can't always carry out. It seems to me that all of us struggle sometimes to control selfish impulses and giving too much of ourselves to the extent that we've got nothing left might make it more likely that we lose control and act not on the good that we want to do but the wrong that we don't want to do. Mary in this story has not done quite so much to serve Jesus and the other guests but by sitting and listening She's honoured Jesus, and she's also fed and nurtured her own soul. It seems to me that God wants us to be well, to be happy and cared for. We're told that our Heavenly Father knows all our needs. The Creator who feeds the sparrows and clothes the lilies wants to bestow that same care and provision on each one of us. Perhaps, therefore, we shouldn't be ashamed to make space for our own needs. Caring for ourselves, making healthy choices about food, exercise, rest, relationships, honours God and acknowledges our need to be fed. And not just fed physically. God didn't create us as servants or robots. He created us as thinking and feeling people modelled on God's own image. He understands our human need for sustenance and nurture of the soul as well as of the body. This is the way that he designed us. Emotional well-being and mental health are subjects which are being spoken about a bit more in the present time. A number of people in the public eye have contributed to raising awareness of these issues, not least in recent weeks the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And as well, perhaps the collective experience of going through a year of pandemic has helped society to acknowledge that health and well-being are about more than our physical needs. I personally gained some insight into these issues a few years ago when I went through a period of time where I found myself struggling with mental health. And speaking to others, I've realised just how common it is for people to experience such difficulties. As with any other illness, we cannot have control over the symptoms of mental ill health. When I became unwell, it was helpful to me to realise that it wasn't my fault and that acknowledging there was a problem didn't make me a failure. At the same time, 
the experience opened my eyes to some ways in which I could take better care of myself, physically and mentally, and I started to appreciate why self-care can be very important. One of the things I came to appreciate at first hand is our need for refreshment from God. As Christians, we don't have to stand alone. We have access to the whole unlimited resources of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. However, if we do not draw on this limitless supply of source, uh, the sim if we do not draw on this limitless source of power and love, we ourselves are just us. And if we keep on expending our time, energy, care and commitment without stopping to refuel, it stands to reason we'll eventually get to a point where we just run out and have nothing to sustain either ourselves or others. In our Old Testament reading, the story about Elijah makes me think of somebody suffering complete exhaustion. One might use the phrase burnout. Elijah's been really busy serving the Lord. Everything hasn't really quite gone as he planned and he's got to the point where he has just had enough. He needs to be refuelled by God, both to be fed physically and also to receive from God that still small voice, the sense of God passing by, coming to speak to, to be with Elijah. We see places in the Gospels where Jesus himself follows this pattern, seeking out quiet places and time away from the crowds to spend time resting, talking with friends and with his father in prayer. So perhaps this is a pattern that we need to take note of for our own lives. Jesus commands us to call for others. Jesus' Jesus's commandments call us to take care of others, but they also point towards a balance which makes space for God, other people and our own well-being. I've also become more aware that caring for ourselves and others is not only about how we act, what we do and how we behave, but also what we hold in our hearts and minds. During the period in which I struggled most, I realised that I was trying to follow Jesus while having all but lost sight of the vision that he offers us of what life with him can and should look like. Jesus speaks of fullness of life, not in the sense of living life with a full schedule, but in the sense of being fully alive. At this difficult point, the thing which prompted me to stop and seek help was an advert I heard on the radio. It was a commercial advertising the charity Christians Against Poverty and it featured someone talking about her experience of overcoming debt and challenging life circumstances to reach a much better place in her life. What struck me was she said, before I was just existing in my life, now I am really living. And it made me realise that at that point, even without facing any particular adverse life circumstances such as this lady had encountered, and despite having so much to enjoy and appreciate in my life, I also was not living the joyful, hopeful, creative life of peace and love that Jesus holds open for me. It put me in mind of what Paul wrote to the Corinthians, that no matter what wisdom we have or good works we do, without love we're no more than an empty gong or a clanging cymbal. No matter how much we do to serve and care and help other people, we can never do enough to demonstrate Jesus' standard of love. Jesus only has ever lived out love to perfection, as we remember at this time of Easter. So it seems to me that the only way we can really reveal Jesus' love to those around us is for it to be reflected off us, to be reflected from a reality of love in our own lives. And the only way we can live in this reality is to make space for Jesus in our hearts, to accept his care for us, expressed by God, expressed by others, 
expressed by ourselves in our own attitude to ourselves. By living as people who know that we are loved, perhaps we can model to the world around us what being cared for looks like and reflect some of that care outwards towards others. None of us need to spend our lives merely existing on a conveyor belt of days and days and weeks and months. None of us need to let ourselves run dry until a clanging gong is all that is left. We all have the open invitation to stop and lean back into the loving arms of a saviour who understands all our needs and is bigger than all of our difficulties. Sometimes I think many of us need a little reminder of this truth. Of course, this does not mean that we will not have problems, ill health or difficulties. These things are a part of life. But Jesus has promised to give us strength and comfort sufficient for everything our lives may bring. So, to summarise, it feels to me like caring for ourselves is far from a selfish, selfish distraction from serving others. In fact, I think that recognising and fulfilling our own need for love and nourishment is a vital starting point if we want to show love and care to others. Knowing, hearing and feeling the love that Jesus has for us provides us with both the reason and the resources to act on his command to love other people. As Christians, we seek to live in the way of Jesus. So let us acknowledge that this involves taking time for ourselves as well as others. Let us try to see ourselves, just like those around us, as loved sons and daughters of God. And let us turn to Jesus for refreshment and sustenance, allowing his love to flourish in our own lives so that it both feeds us and shines through us onto the lives of others. Amen. Uh, we sing mm. this reflective hymn, Take This Moment, Time and Space. Take my friends around
we continue in prayer. Creator God, we pray for the world and all who share it, our human sisters and brothers across the globe, and the myriad of animals and plants which all have a part to play in the diversity and life of your creation. We hold before you the tragedies of deforestation and mass extinctions, melting glaciers, and all the harm which human activity has done to this planet. We pray for all who work towards restoration and healing, and all who fight against injustice. God of love and hope, let your love be known to all. Father, we pray for places where people suffer from violence and unrest, from poverty and famine, from discrimination or persecution. We ask your protection on those who have left their homes, who are displaced or seeking refuge. We pray for world leaders that they may act with justice and compassion to meet the needs of those who are in desperate need. God of love and hope, let your love be known to all. Jesus, our healer, we bring to you all who are unwell in body, mind and soul. We remember those who are suffering or have suffered from COVID-19 and those on the front line whose resources have been drained by months of hard work and caring for others. We pray for those who are lonely, those who live in fear or worry, and those who have been bereaved. God of love and hope, let your love be known to all. Loving Lord, you know us completely and love us with all our faults and mistakes. We pray also for ourselves. We place into your hands those we care about, knowing that you love them too. We trust you with the things which are hard for us knowing that you are bigger and stronger than any obstacle or problem. And we take time once again to feast on your love and goodness and rest in your peace. Amen. I'm going to share a poem as we close our prayers. God of Surprises Lord, you love us so dearly. Help us to love ourselves. Lord, you understand us so clearly when we are hardly able to comprehend ourselves. Let us not be so blinded by our own sense of failure that we cannot see your outstretched arms ready to accept us. Search through our imperfection, Lord, and reach deep, soul deep, finding there that part of you that we imagined lost and ourselves abandoned. Reunite us with the heart and depth of love 
that lies within us. Give us the courage to bask in you and the joy of your forgiveness and in the certainty of your perfect vision for us. May we find our delight. Amen. Our closing hymn is another Easter favourite, Christ is Alive. who is our source of peace, give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you. Amen. <laughs>